Terrorists in Belgium killed 32 people in attacks at Brussels Airport and a train station in March. Former professional basketball player Sebastian Bellin was among the wounded at the airport. He was on his way home to his wife and two young daughters in Michigan at the time. Vladimir Duty of our streaming network that CBSN has followed Bellin's remarkable story over these past eight months. His recovery is a show of strength to the terrorist. I'm thinking I, I gotta make it. I gotta make it. I gotta make it. I gotta make it. I gotta see my daughters again. I, I, gotta, I gotta see my girls. We first met Sebastian Bellin in his hospital room in Belgium just days after he was injured in the Brussels terror attack. <laughs> the former athlete was headed home from a business trip in Europe when the blast shattered his right hip and left leg. Just bone and flesh just sticking out from just underneath my belt. I'm just so focused on the instinct of survival. Doctors were uncertain whether he would walk again. I look forward to challenge myself to get back to where I was before. We were with Bellin when his father flew in from California to pay him a surprise visit. What are you doing? <laughs> you can't do that to me. <laughs> and again when he was finally reunited with his daughters. Come here. Nah. Come here. Nah. Why are you afraid? You think you're going to hurt my... You're not going to hurt that. After six surgeries, 79 days in the hospital, and 14 more in rehabilitation. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ellen returned to his home in Michigan to make the most of his second shot at life. <laughs> For CBS This Morning, Vladimir Dutier, New York. A good raspberry is always good. Doctors predicted that it would take Sebastian Bellin a year and a half to walk again, but take a look at this. Yeah. His determination helped him reach that goal. Here you come, Abby, in just four months. <laughs> Oh, that's we are great. thrilled to so welcome glad to have you here. Thank you so much. We're really glad to have you here. And walking in on your own. Yeah. Uh, hi, Sebi. I love that your dad man. calls you Sebi, so that's I'm right. call you that, too. Yes. <laughs> I got the biggest kick when you walked through today and you were carrying your little daughter in the arms. I got so choked up because I, we've all been following your journey, and it's so good to see you. The doctor said it would take you a year and a half. You had other ideas. Why were you able to do it so quickly, do you think? Oh, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a question of motivation. And, uh, Had you set a goal, though? Absolutely. You know, um, the, the attacks happened on March 22nd, and my oldest daughter, uh, Cecilia's birthday is July 22nd. And, uh, you know, I'm not great at math, uh -huh. but I, when the doctors told me the news, you know, the first few days, it's, there's so much negativity that's yes. given to you. You know, you're not going to be able to do this, you can't do that, mm -hmm. because they want to give you the worst case scenario, not to build your hopes up. Right. And so when they told me you wouldn't, I wouldn't walk for, you know, uh, over a year, I just said, that's nah, not possible. I'm walking you know? for her birthday. That's right. Did you do it on her birthday? Yep. You four, did. Months, four months later, I walked on her birthday. Yeah. And, uh, you know, th these are kind of milestones that you look back on and say, well, that's, that's really what made it. You know, when you're walking for your daughter, it's definitely a different motivation. We saw that picture when you were laying there, Sebi. You had to rely on the kindness of strangers as you're laying there, really totally helpless. Yeah. In the airport that day. <clears throat> Look, there's, you need a lot of luck to overcome these kind of things. You know, I, when you lose 50% of your blood, when your legs are shattered, I got a bullet through the hip, you know, so you, you can't do this by yourself. And uh, so I was very, um, I was but very you were aware. You observant too, though. Mm. Yeah, well, I think that's because it wasn't, you know, I, I, I didn't let fear overcome, you know, myself. Like, I didn't, I didn't let fear control me. And uh, I just accepted the fact that, look, you're, you're not getting out of this. You're not walking out of here. And then when you, when you accept it, then it, it no longer controls you. And you start being able to focus on things that maybe other people lose track of. So a scarf, you know, a suitcase up to elevate your legs, a, a baggage cart in the back where I became mobile again. Mm -hmm. Those are all things that I noticed that really saved my life. Mm -hmm. How has everything that's happened to you changed you? Well, I, I say that the, the close, again, I'm lucky. In a, in a way that I was so close to death, you know, because there was dead people around me. There were body parts on me, you know, from other people. Mm -hmm. So when you, the closer you are to death, the easier it is to overcome it because you realize how lucky you are. The, you know? the, the pictures are so graphic and your descriptions are graphic as well. I wonder, I mean, you were thinking about your kids right after this happened. How do you talk to your kids about what the pictures that they see and, and what happened to you today? That's a great question. So, I think it's a great, I mean, it's a learning experience for them. 
And I think, um, you know, my wife's a teacher, so I kind of, you know, nudge her and say, yeah. you know, how, how do we move on f from this? And uh, I think the big, the big thing is to say, look, really terrible things sometimes happen, mm -hmm. but you can overcome it and you can move little by little. Sometimes it takes a lot of time, but you can overcome it. And it's not, don't try to make the big step, you know, take little steps at a time. So it's in the hospital for three months and then it's, you know, on crutches and then it's this and then it's that and then it's being able to get back in the gym and do all those things. It's step-by-step -step progress. So they see that anything overwhelming can actually also be tackled by taking it one step at a time. Are they still nervous for you because you're still traveling? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Vanessa, it's hard to, uh, you know, if I... Uh, feel like a teenager you know when Vanessa sees me packing to go on a trip <laughs> yeah. you know where are you going yes. what's in your bag you know what's going on so it's uh yeah it, it takes time you know it just takes time but the most important thing is you know you said you had a gut feeling of danger Sebi which I thought was interesting in in Laz's in, not Laz's in Vlad's piece on on uh Saturday you said you had a gut feeling of danger yeah when you I've, were Brussels. I've always been you know I always value experiences you know, I, um, we have a saying where we, um, I always say in our family, invest in experiences. So the more experiences you have, the more you mm -hmm. tend to yeah. um, have the luggage or the tools to overcome things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the 38 years I, was, I lived in, on three continents of the world, I speak four languages, you know, these are all experiences that somehow it fed me to believe that um, there's something wasn't really right, mm -hmm. you know, and the night before, um, I was in a restaurant um, with huge, big glass windows, uh, which you see in the 48-hour piece. And um, they, honestly, it was, I just imagined Paris and people like terrorists coming down the road and just started shooting up. Wow. So I think my body and my mind was preparing itself. I don't know, and wow. there's certain things, like I, at the check-in counter, I realized that one of the gates was closed. So I said, well, that's, that's strange. And, and it was, this was a few minutes before the, the, the first blast. And I was just picking up on things that I mm -hmm. think mentally I was maybe a little bit more prepared than, than others to face it. What's ahead for you? Ahead, I mean, it's, you know, uh, one day at a time, the old, the old cliche yeah. where when you're, when you're really, really close to death, I mean, everything seems so, there's so much clarity. It's, um, there's so many wonderful things like er, just getting up in the morning, yeah. you know, whether it's Vanessa, you know, tapping me on the right. on, on, on the shoulder or whatever. It's just it's it's the best thing. I mean, life just takes a completely different turn for you. Well, and that's why I'm saying it's a real gift. Yeah. You know, it, I took a lot of, let's say, um, heat for saying that because there's a lot of people that died, a lot of yes. people that lost. But for me, it really is a gift because life 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 is simplified. You know? Yeah, And I know your beautiful family is yeah. so. So glad to have you back. Thank, Thank you, you for bringing them here as well. Thank you. Yeah. Sebastian. We're very glad so, to see you in person. Yes. Thank very you for allowing just keep smiling. I love <laughs> it. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad to be thankful for yeah. you. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you again.